It's great to see you. I uh, want to ask you a lot about last night. I'm sort of looking at the big picture, though, first, um, because we have Donald Trump putting out a statement saying he won the debate. I didn't see him on the stage. I guess he was doing an interview elsewhere. elsewhere. And then we have his co-defendants' um, mugshots, um, where they're smiling, where Rudy Giuliani, it seems to be making fun of the situation. Donald Trump wants to make his surrender in Fulton County kind of a prime time event. I mean, they appear to think this is funny. Can you list the ways in which this is all so very not funny? Well, they can make as much fun of all this stuff as they want now, but having spent seven years as the U.S. attorney in New Jersey, uh, Mika, uh, it, it's all fun and games until the jury's in the box. Um, and then it becomes an indifferent, much, much different thing. And, you know, look, um, Donald Trump, what would you expect? You've known him for a long time. Of course, he's going to put out a statement that says he won the debate last night. Uh, but in the end of it, he wasn't there because he's a coward, because he can't come and defend either his failed record as president um, or his personal conduct, which has so disgraced uh, what's gone on uh, in our country over the last number of years. And so, uh, you know, I wouldn't expect anything different from him. Um, I, I don't, uh, I have the true social app on my phone and I'm a better man for it. <laughs> okay. And um, how do you think that you did in the debate last night? Um, and what did you think of the field without Trump in it? Well, look, I felt good about how we did last night. You know, I wanted to make sure that everybody, both in that arena and much more importantly, um, all of the people watching at home understand that I'm going to stand up and tell the truth about where our country needs to go and about how Donald Trump has failed us and would fail our party um, if he were ever made the nominee again. Um, but also talked about important issues. You know, I, I guess we, Wes must have turned in early last night. Um, didn't hear me talking about education. I was talking about that last night on the stage, talking about my trip to Ukraine um, and, and how important it was for us to stand against Vladimir Putin. Um, and when Vivek Ramaswamy was just, you know, getting too out of hand, the moderators wouldn't try to control him, so I did. Governor Christie, uh, good morning. Mm -hmm. You told some truth last night that in, in the parallel universe shouldn't be that difficult to tell, but you and Asa Hutchinson seem to be the only one able to do it, which is that Donald Trump's conduct around January 6th, around the 2020 election, whatever you think about these uh, prosecutions of him now, uh, was wrong, was unforgivable. Uh, you also did not raise your hand in this moment, you and Asa Hutchinson, uh, when the candidates were asked, would you still support Donald Trump as the candidate if he were convicted? You could see some of them, including Governor DeSantis, look down the aisle to see if everyone else is raising their hand and then he joined in. Why is it, not for you, but why is it so difficult for these other candidates to tell those very basic truths, not even talking about policy, but basic truths that you told about the Constitution last night? I, I can only assume it's because they're auditioning for what they pray will be a future vice presidential nomination or cabinet bid um, in, a, in a Trump administration. Uh, the problem for them is going to be Donald Trump's never going to be president of the United States again. Uh, and it becomes more and more clear to me every day um, that folks around this country, especially independents um, and disaffected Republicans, are not going to rejoin the Trump coalition based upon his conduct over the last you know, three years since he left the presidency. And so I think these are all political strategic decisions that these folks are making. Um, and it's got to matter whether someone says they're willing to suspend the Constitution, that they took an oath to preserve, protect and defend. Uh, that's just wrong. It's not a hard answer for me. Um, and it, it's not a hard answer for them either. Um, yeah. But they're playing a political game. Governor Christie, you were one of few candidates on stage who you voiced a robust support for Ukraine. And you mentioned your recent trip there. That's a real divide within the Republican primary electorate. And how do you intend to make the case that continued United States support to Ukraine is in the national interest? Well, Vladimir Putin helped me again yesterday to make that case. 
uh, with the with the murder of Prigozhin. Now, he's an awful person too. Um, but we don't settle political scores through murder unless, of course, you're Vladimir Putin. And this is the guy who Donald Trump calls brilliant and a genius. Um, sorry, uh, I disagree. And I do believe that we need to stand up for Ukraine and that that fight right now is a proxy war between the United States and China and that it is the right thing to do to protect freedom loving people who are being tortured and killed by a barbaric Russian army. And it is the right thing to do to allow the Ukrainians to be armed to fight this fight and send a very clear message to uh, Vladimir Putin, but even more importantly, to President Xi in China, that the United States will not cut and run from its friends. Governor Christie, uh, I have three quick questions for you. I'll give them to you all at once because you have amazing retentive powers, that I know. The first question is, <laughs> Uh, do you believe that Joseph R. Biden was legitimately elected president of the United States in the fall of 2020? The second question is, um, do you believe as a former U.S. attorney that any other of the candidates on that stage last night who said that they would continue to support and vote for a convicted felon, potentially, as president of the United States? What's your reaction to that? And third, your reaction to how annoying were you and was Vivek Ramaswamy on that stage last night? All right, so as to question number one, of course, Joe Biden was and is the legitimately elected president of the United States from the 2020 campaign. Um, that's an easy one to answer. It's so easy that even Ron DeSantis can answer it now. So that means it's really easy. <laughs> um, as, uh, as to the, the second question, it makes me laugh when you have folks up there who say that they're for law and order. And we heard that a number of times last night. But you can't be for law and order for some people and not for everybody. And so that means the law applies to everyone. I heard Mike Pence say last night, I wish that he wouldn't have been charged, but no one's above the law. Well, which one is it? Hmm. I, you know, and so I get confused by folks. The only thing that offends me more than folks who turn their back on law and order as it applies to Donald Trump for political purposes are those who try to have it both ways for political purposes. Um, and, and thirdly, I think I said it pretty clearly in the clip you showed that by about 15 minutes in, I had already had enough of being told that for somebody who, like me, sacrificed seven years of my life being United States attorney for New Jersey, then another eight years being governor of New Jersey, that I am bought and paid for by anybody, especially by a candidate like Vivek, who, you know, in his book that came out last year, said Donald Trump's conduct on January 6th was reprehensible, plain and simple. Now he says, I didn't say that. No, I'm not saying you said it, you wrote it. Or whoever wrote your book for you wrote it. And secondly, um, you know, it, it, he now says that he's the guy who will pardon Donald Trump and wants everyone else to commit to it. And I actually thought Mike Pence's answer on that was pretty good, where he said, you know, I have used the pardon power. And so have I as governor of New Jersey. And it should be used with mercy and reason. And there's no reason to show mercy on Donald Trump when he doesn't even want to admit that anything he did was wrong. Yeah, you're right. Mm. Vivek Ramaswamy proposed a preemptive pardon on all of this that we're watching for Donald Trump. So, Governor, let me ask you, a lot of people think you had a good night last night. They still look at the polls and they go, well, Trump's this is Trump's race to lose. He's not going to lose it. He's up by 40 points and on and on. There was a poll out yesterday in New Hampshire that has you up now in double digits uh, in second place behind Donald Trump in the state of New Hampshire. What changes the dynamic of a race that a lot of people, frankly, have written off and say this is an inevitability? It's a fait accompli. Donald Trump's the nominee. Sure, he might lose the general election, but he's going to be the nominee of the party. Why do you think that's wrong? And if you do think it's wrong, which I assume you do, what changes here? What changes this dynamic that with each new prosecution, each new indictment, each new appearance in court, Trump's numbers seem to go up among primary voters? Look, I, the first thing is I, I make a gentle suggestion to all of you in the news media from someone who's been a practitioner in this business now for over 20 years. National polls in presidential races 
during the primary mean nothing. We don't have a national primary. And if you don't think those national polls will change on caucus day in Iowa, you have never watched this process. If you don't believe they'll change again after first in the nation primary day in New Hampshire, you've never watched or appreciated this process. So what will change this is a campaign. Last night was the starting gun for the campaign. And I think this coming week, leading into Labor Day weekend, most normal Americans will say, leave me alone. I'm enjoying mm -hmm. the last week of summer with my family, and I don't need to hear from you people. And so we should keep quiet for most of this week. And then after Labor Day, it's going to get going. And, you know, Willie, I look at the New Hampshire poll you just referenced. I have not been in this race three months. And I've gone from zero to 14 in New Hampshire. I am past Ron DeSantis by five points. I am past Vivek by three points. And I'm now within 20 of Donald Trump. Okay, 20 ain't going to win you anything but, you know, nice parting gifts. But it's August. So when people are asked polls nationally that say if the election were held today, their answer should be, I'd be shocked because it's not <laughs> going to be held today. So I would not worry about the national polls. Look at these state by state polls in Iowa, in New Hampshire, in South Carolina and in Nevada, because the race will change markedly when each one of those states weigh in. And then we'll see where we stand. So um, I'm not the least bit discouraged. In fact, after not even three months in this race, I'm incredibly encouraged. And last night, I was happy to get on that stage, look into the camera, and tell the people the truth about our democracy, the truth about Donald Trump, and the truth, in my view, about Joe Biden, and the fact that neither one of them are up to it. You know, people say the country's so divided. There's one thing they're united on. 75% of the people in this country say they don't want the race to be Trump versus Biden. And so I think we should... Keep that in mind when we're evaluating all these polls.